Hello everyone, today we will be learning from what is possibly the strongest chess player to ever exist, Stockfish 15. It is usually at the top or very near the top of the computer engine rating lists and today we're going to watch it demolish a fellow computer program, Komodo 13, with the white pieces. Komodo will be playing black and Stockfish will teach us how to take down Komodo's French defense. So let's get right into this game. E4, E6. Preparing d5, the French defense. d4, white gets the ideal pawn center. d5, striking at that pawn center. Knight c3 defends the pawn on e4. Bishop b4 looks to undermine the defense of that pawn. The threat is to take out the knight and then take out the pawn. So the pawn is pushed forward. Now c5, striking at the white pawn center. Threatening to trade a less central pawn for a more central pawn. So a3, encouraging black to take on c3 which is what happens and after b takes c3 now the pawn on d4 is supported by another pawn so if black captures it'll just be replaced white maintains the two central pawns once in a while you might see the move bishop a5 especially if you're playing a beginner this is not so great for black there's a couple good responses for white I like queen g4 attacking this pawn if the queen's allowed to take that pawn then there's not any good way to save that rook black will be losing the rook and black will have to make some substandard move to defend that pawn like king f8 giving up the right to castle or g6 weakening some dark squares around where you'd like to castle so just remember that queen g4 move it's a good way to deal with bishop a5 which is not something you'll see often if you're playing strong players bishop takes c3 is by far more common b takes c3 and then knight e7 played in the game and now queen g4 played targeting this pawn but here black has moved the knight already so it can just castle now bishop d3 putting the bishop on a very nice diagonal eyeing this potentially sensitive h7 square knight b to c6 played you might be wondering isn't c4 a good move kicking the bishop off this knight's diagonal doesn't have to go backwards now no it does not because here white can play bishop to h6 threatening checkmate in one of course that bishop cannot be taken out or the black king will be in check so that has to be dealt with with knight to g6 and now the bishop has the opportunity to take out that knight and after this this bishop must move to safety and now white can get a nice attack with h4 going since the center is closed up a lot of times you can get away with leaving your king in the center and going for an attack on your opponent's castled king because black has no way to break open the center and take advantage of the fact that this king is not castled. So this is a good attack for white here. And here black would like to play h6 because the idea is white just simply wants to play h5, open up this file for the rook and just try to, you know, if not checkmate, you know, do something terrible to black. If black could play h6 here, then when h5 comes, you could play g5 and just shut down the possibility of opening up this diagonal for the rook. But here, you can't play h6 because this pawn would lack protection. Remember this because this variation comes up in a few moves, and it's actually not as much for black to worry about a little bit later after there's been more development. Knight b to c6 is what's played. Now queen to h5, threatening checkmate on h7. And now knight g6 played to block that checkmating threat. If h6 is played here, then there's the sacrifice. Bishop takes h6, pawn takes, queen takes, again checkmate is threatened. So that has to be blocked, but this knight cannot move now or black's getting checkmated and so it can just be attacked with h4, h5. White will get the sacrifice piece back opening up the file for the rook and this black king is super weak and terrible things are about to happen to black. So just remember that if you ever see h6 in this opening, knight g6 is the preferred defense and now we have knight to f3. Queen c7 is played here. You might see a beginner play bishop d7 and this leaves black vulnerable to the knight g5 attack threatening checkmate on h7. The point is, black would like to play h6 here, but in this variation, white can take on f7, and then once that knight's taken, 
you can just get your piece back since the knight on g6 was now undefended, no pawn on f7 anymore. And if black tries to regain the pawn, see white has basically won a pawn here, by taking on d4, we can take on h6. That's the problem. This pawn's pinned, can't take the bishop. So this is not good for black. But by playing queen c7, instead of this bad move, bishop d7, you play queen c7, if white were to try the same thing, it's a little different because knight g5, h6, knight takes f7 could be met with queen takes f7. That was not possible when the queen was on d8. And now, if the same thing happens, you got the queen here to take out the queen, and then the bishop replaces the queen on g6, but now there's no threat of bishop takes h6 since that's not a queen, and black could just go ahead and win his pawn back with c takes d4, this, and then the knight takes on d4, threatening a well, not threatening for because the bishop's defending, but you can see this is not so bad for black. So a good little detail to remember, the queen needs to defend f7. If you see an opponent play something else, you might get away with this knight g5 attack. Okay, so after queen to c7, we got bishop to e3, and now black plays c4. It's a little better now. The bishop takes on g6, the pawn takes, the queen's under attack, the queen has to move, and now queen to f7. Now h4 is not such a worry because this pawn is defended, and h4 can just be met with h6, and then h5 can be met with g5. And another detail is the knight is on f3, so there's no f4 to try to attack g5 and undermine everything. So black is a little more developed, so this h4 is not as big of a danger as it was before even though it does get played. But white doesn't play it yet. Stockfish goes for a4. I should mention that Stockfish and Komodo have been playing since move 10. The first 10 moves of the game were pre-selected from the opening book, and they've been played thousands of times, and they're both fine for both colors. And it, from move 10 on, both computer programs are thinking on their own without any help from the book. OK, so what's the point of a4 here? Stockfish is planning to reroute the bishop to a3, where it will attack that rook and hopefully drive it off that half-open file. So bishop d7, bishop c1, and now Komodo plays queen to e8. That's a good move because it will allow the rook to stay on this file. It can move forward if bishop a3 comes. So Stockfish doesn't play that yet. He says, OK, I'm going to go for h4 now keep some options open for this bishop. Maybe the bishop will help attack over here. So rook f5 is played to discourage h5. The rook can just take it. There's actually the queen, the pawn, and the rook guarding against h5. So that move cannot be played by white yet. Queen to h3 played. The idea is g4 to kick that rook away and then maybe play h5. So Komodo goes for h6, just for preparing possibly g5 in response to h5, keeping this file from opening. Stockfish goes ahead with g4. Rook goes back to f8. Now you might think, isn't it good to put the rook on f7? That's not so good. It's useful to keep the queen looking at this side of the board. This is where the attack is going on. And the rook on f8 can be attacked by bishop a3, but Komodo's plan is just to put the knight in the way. So queen g3, this is kind of a multi-purpose move. Preparing rook h3, which is played later on, defending f2 in case queen to f7 comes, this pawn will need some more defense if this knight wants to move. You're going to see where that knight moves. It's going to be a pretty cool move. a5, played by black. Bishop a3, attacking the rook and as planned knight to e7 now rook to f7 white can already play knight to g5 spoiler alert this move's coming later but if rook f7 was played it could have been played here with an attack on the rook the rook doesn't have any safe squares anymore and if you take that knight oh you got problems because this file opens the threat is not to put the queen here the threat will be to put the rook here and then put the queen behind the rook because the queen wants to keep an eye on f4. Because the king is going to need to escape this way. 
and it wants to go to this f7 square. If you could play rook f4, then you could put the king on f7, maybe everything would be okay. So that's the way white is gonna go forward in that variation, and it's not gonna be pleasant. So Komodo, you know, it sees a lot. It's no dummy. It is a chess engine after all. Knight to e7, and now king d2, connecting the rooks and defending c2. Stockfish is planning this knight you know, the offering of the knight by moving it to g5. And it's going to be important to defend c2 because black could have a defense with bishop takes a4, bishop takes c2, and then bishop to f5. Because the plan is, you know, white's going to try to do this. If the knight is captured on g5, white's going to try to do that. Put the queen behind the rook, get the rook in here, check. The king goes here, the queen checks from here, and then if you have to put the knight in the way, that's your only move is to put something in the way, then there's a problem right here. The rook's here. It's bad. But if you can put a bishop in the way instead, if, you, if this bishop can be here instead, you can give up a piece because you know white sacrificed the knight originally. So that's a very deep prophylactic move defending c2. Stockfish knows that this is a potential defense against what he's planning on doing. I hope you followed all that. This is what happens when you look at computer games. It gets crazy. So let's see. After king d2, there was queen to f7. Okay, attacking the knight on f3. I should mention that taking the pawn right here is not working. If bishop takes a4, then white takes on e7 and black loses a piece because that bishop was undefended. The queen's defense was drawn away from the bishop. So that is an important detail in case anyone didn't realize that. Queen f7 attacking this knight. And now king e2 defends the knight and also defends f2 so that that knight may move. And now we have b6. Komodo doesn't really have a lot to do here. Okay, it kind of solidifies that pawn right there. And rook a7 is played in a minute, so it provides the opportunity to get the rook onto this rank here. After rook h3, Stockfish decides that it's time to get ready for the attack, get ready for knight g5. Now, rook a7 is adding some defense to this knight indirectly. And now knight g5. Let's just see what happens if that knight's taken. h takes g5, h takes g5. Again, we have queen h2 coming, followed by this. So how does black deal with this? If you just play queen f4, try to challenge the queen right away, then there's just queen takes, rook takes, and then you lose the knight on e7. So that's not working. If instead you play bishop c6, it's kind of the point of having the rook there. Now the knight has some defense. Now we go queen h2, and here you need to clear this f7 square for the king. If you play queen f4 here, there's rook h8 check, king goes to f7, and now the queen has no protection. Queen takes f4 check, wins the queen. So you have to go queen to e8, and now rook h8 check, king goes here, queen to f4 check, you have to go knight to f5, there's no bishop f5 here. If this maneuver was allowed, then bishop f5 would be an okay defense, but knight to f5, Unfortunately, this opens up the diagonal with the bishop and the rook hitting f8. Rook takes f8 check. Black will lose the queen. That's why you can't take the knight on g5. So queen to e8 is played instead, you know, potentially opening up the square for the king. Now white plays king to d2. Again, defending c2 because now that black doesn't have to mess around trying to open up this square here maybe there was an idea of taking the knight maybe black could get away with that if the bishop could take on a4 and do this so a prophylactic defense saying you know what i'm not gonna let you take my knight and have a good defense against my attack my knight's staying right there and if you take it you're screwed okay so rook to b7 uh, Komodo's having problems figuring out what to do here. I guess the idea here is maybe to play b5, open up this file for the rook, maybe get some counterplay. Now we got bishop to d6, Just improving the bishop's position. Queen d8 played by Komodo. 
This prepares rook to e8 so that this knight may move. It won't be pinned anymore. And then the idea after that is to play knight to c8, driving this bishop back to a3, and then taking on a4. So rook to b1 is played by Stockfish. There's no bishop takes a4 as long as this knight's here, I should, I should mention, in case anyone was wondering, because the knight will take on e6. So that's not good for black. So now we got rook to e8. Okay, getting ready for this idea, trying to get that bishop out of there and then take on a4. I should mention here that it almost looks like Komodo can get away with taking the knight on g5 at this point. Look at this line. h takes g5. h takes king f7. But the move here, because isn't the king getting the e8? That's kind of the point. But the move here is queen to f4 check. And the king goes here. Looks like the king's safe. But no, queen sacrifice. And then after king takes, we got rook h8 check. The knight cannot go in the way because it's pinned. And then you're just, after king f7, you're going to grab the queen. Okay, so that's not working. And then if you put the knight in the way here, well, there's just bishop takes f8, queen takes, pawn takes. You're losing the exchange. So still can't get away with taking that knight on g5. But we got rook e8, unpinning the knight, getting ready for some knight c8 action. Queen to f4 played by Stockfish. The idea is to come into f7 with check and then possibly take this pawn if you move that knight. And once the queen gets here, you can't drive the queen away with rook f8 or the queen is going to take this knight here. So black gets kind of tied up. Black doesn't really want the queen coming in to f7. Komodo says, okay, my idea failed, but I can attack your queen and at least you're not coming into f7. So the queen goes to h2. The queen is now in a better position. Queen e8 played by Komodo. Says, okay, we can play a little back and forth. F3, just waiting. I'm not really sure what the purpose of that move is. I mean, the pawn is defended by the knight now instead of the queen. But let's see what Komodo does. Queen to d8, okay. Doing a lot of back and forth. Not a real active plan for black here. Now Stockfish plays bishop to a3, which looks strange. But after a little investigating with the engine, I believe the thinking is that b2 is guarded because the plan is rook here and Stockfish is a little bit worried about Komodo opening up this file and then getting a rook here and then targeting c2 with the rook and bishop. I think that's the thinking. So, queen to e8. How many moves has that queen made now? Komodo is just going back and forth, doesn't have a lot to do. Rook to a1. This was another mysterious move. At this point, white is totally winning, according to Stockfish, but black can get a little bit of counterplay with this weird line where he plays bishop takes a4 allowing the knight to take on e6 but then gets in a quick b5 and b4 and so the rook on a1 is just playing against that because there'll be the possibility of taking that bishop out after first taking on e7 maybe they had something to do with that it's a very deep prophylactic move that wasn't even really necessary I think white could have just went ahead with something more aggressive. But, you know, Stockfish is going to try to prevent any possible hint of counterplay. Queen d8, yet another queen move played by Komodo. And now rook to h1 played. There is an idea of playing h5. Opening up the file by taking the pawn and then sacrificing a rook on h6 to open everything up. So bishop c8 is played by Komodo. Thinking about maybe targeting the a pawn with the queen instead of the bishop so that the bishop can stay here and defend e6. I believe that's the thinking. Now we got f4, another kind of weird looking move. It seems that there is the idea after h5 and then taking here and then the knight takes here. The knight could drop into f4 if the pawn was still here on f3. Yeah, in that line, black would be sacrificing the rook on f8 because that knight moved. And then it would be replaced with the queen. 
and the queen would be supporting the knight on f4 if the pawn was on f3. But if there's no pawn here, if this pawn is just captured by the knight instead, then you can pin the knight with a rook, and it's, it's a crazy line. It's, again, a losing line for black, but Stockfish is just trying to absolutely maximize its evaluation, and that's the way it thinks it needs to do it, by playing this weird f4 move. So now Komodo plays h5 to stop the advance of this pawn and stop the exchange on g6. Stockfish plays queen to f2. Now the plan is to go to f3 and put pressure on that pawn. So queen to e8, adding some defense through this pawn here. We get queen to f3. Now bishop to d7. Thinking about grabbing on a4 again, possibly, to sacrifice the e pawn, but you get a passed pawn out of it. It doesn't work. Nothing works for black at this point. Black is lost but still trying to get some kind of counterplay. A passed pawn, you know, maybe, maybe there's hope. Stockfish takes on h5. Okay, the bishop takes on a4 and allows knight takes e6. Rook's under attack. Rook f5. This is Komodo's plan. Threatening to just take this pawn here. So Stockfish plays knight g5. Blocks the rook's access to that pawn. Now white just simply threatens to take on e7 and then take on d5. That pawn's lacking protection now since this e6 pawn has been eliminated. We have g takes h5 by Komodo. This file's not going to open anymore. As long as this pawn can be maintained here, this pawn won't be marching forward. If instead bishop c6 defending d5, there's h takes g6, and after the knight takes e6, and then maybe something like this in h5, we're just gonna get to h6, and that's just the end of the road for black. So Komodo chooses to take here, trying to hold up the king side attack, but unfortunately allowing the exchange on e7, rook takes, and the queen taking the pawn on d5 with check. The king goes to h8. Now white is a pawn up, but Komodo does have this passed pawn. So if it weren't Stockfish playing, this could be a very dangerous pawn if it could get moving. But it's Stockfish, and Stockfish sees everything. Queen to e4, attacking the rook. Queen to d7 defends. What's coming next is e6. Komodo has foreseen Stockfish will want to advance this pawn, and this queen can now move to d5 and challenge the white queen. Stockfish doesn't mind trading queens at this point, though. After queen takes, rook takes, Rook b1 hitting this pawn here. Rook b7 defends. Rook e3. White is a pawn up with a very powerful passed pawn, which is more dangerous than black's passed pawn. g8 by Komodo trying to get the king towards the middle. Rook to f1. Now the idea is to open up this file. King f8, f5, king e7. Just trying to get in front of the pawn. Rook g3. Knight e4 is the plan. We want to have an attack on g7 when that happens. Bishop to c6. Maybe there's an idea of advancing the pawn now that the bishop's out of the way. But sadly, Komodo never gets the chance because Stockfish's threats are too great. Knight to e4. g7 pawn is under attack. King d8. Defended by the rook. We got f6. You pretty much got to take that pawn. You don't want two passed pawns for white, so Komodo takes. But this allows rook g8 check. King goes to e7. Rook takes f6. Defended by the knight. And now Komodo sacrifices the rook. It was pretty much necessary. The problem was, let's say you just start pushing the pawn. What white's going to do is rook g7 check. And then the king moves and then you can take this rook out. And then there's potential mating nets with this rook. You know, if you go a3, well, basically what happens is the knight checks the king, the king has to go over here, and then the, the pawn is going to turn into a queen. And that's how black is going to get checkmated very quickly once white gets that queen. That knight had to be eliminated because the knight was just uh, too powerful a piece when it came to aiding the progression of this pawn. And the only way to eliminate that knight was to sacrifice the rook to open up that uh, line for the bishop. If you were to try to move your rook somewhere else, you know, try to go to b5, then you got like this, rook g7 check, king here. 
and then here you got knight d6 with the fork so yeah that was the best move according to komodo but you know you can't really talk about best moves when every move loses i guess so that's what komodo came up with sacrificing the rook to grab the knight but now white is just the exchange up and after this it's a pretty easy win for a computer program especially but even for a human here this is how the game ends sacrifices that pawn so that this game can be simplified even more and then the rook just gobbles up some pawns and this is a, a pretty easy win for even amateur players but I'll play it out just so you can see eventually wins the bishop and then we get the checkmate Stockfish didn't even have to queen any of his pawns he was able to checkmate with the rook so I hope you enjoyed that I hope you found those variations entertaining even if some of them were just too ridiculously deep for a human to ever come up with on their own it is fascinating to see how these computer programs outplay each other by very subtle moves that are addressing an issue that will come up many many moves down the road so thanks for watching please subscribe to the channel for more top quality analysis coming your way soon